Some people believe that tornadoes don't hit big cities. That is not true though as there have many tornadoes that have hit large cities. In 2007, the worst tornado in New York City history to hit Brooklyn, New York. The tornado had a path of 5.9 miles long and went from Staten Island to Brooklyn and had nine injuries. It was part of a small tornado outbreak including one other tornado that hit Stapleton, New York. On March 1, 1983, a tornado began near Ladera Heights, California. The tornado then went through Village Green in south-central Los Angeles. Then dissipated near mid-city Los Angeles causing $30 million in damages and having 30 injuries. This tornado was part of another small tornado outbreak that caused another F0 that briefly touched down near Los Angeles but this outbreak was mostly supposed to be rain and some severe weather but it ended up causing supercells and two tornadoes and one significant tornado. Going back one year and moving south of Los Angeles a tornado outbreak had seven tornadoes in California but the most powerful tornado began north of Long Beach, California. It crossed through Signal Hall then right through the Long Beach Airport. The tornado then passed through Lakewood then dissipated near Artesia. It had zero injuries and zero fatalities as there was one more F2 that quickly touched down then dissipated but not before doing F2 damage near Van Nuys and in the outbreak there was also an F1 waterspout that hit Malibu. In 1972 a storm system caused four tornadoes with two F2 tornadoes one touched down for about 0.1 mile and another one had a path of about a mile hitting Stevenson's Washington. But the tornado I will talk about is one of the F3 tornadoes that hit Portland, Oregon. It began north of the Portland International Airport and moved northeast. The tornado then crossed the Oregon-Washington border where it hit an elementary school injuring 70 students and crossed over Russell Landing, Washington then hit East Mill Plain. It then dissipated near Camp Curie Park. It had six fatalities and 300 injuries and caused $25 million in damages. On March 11, 1999, a storm system that caused six tornadoes, one of them was an F2 that hit Salt Lake City, Utah. The tornado began near Poplar Grove, then went northeast going right through downtown Salt Lake City. It then dissipated near Greater Avenues. When the tornado hit the downtown area of Salt Lake City, a fireball was seen because of a power substation exploding when the tornado hit it. The tornado also had the second fatality from a Utah tornado and also had 80 injuries. The tornado also hit Delta Stadium where the Utah Jazz basketball team played at the time. In 1972, the capital of the state of Arizona called Phoenix got hit by an F2. The tornado began north of the Phoenix International Airport, then went west of Scottsdale. It then crossed the Camelback Mountain in Scottsdale, Arizona. The tornado then went between the Paradise Valley and the Phoenix Mountain Preserve. Then it dissipated near the Scottsdale Airport. This tornado had three injuries and zero deaths as it is the highest rated tornado to hit the Phoenix area and the storm caused even more severe flash flooding than before as the month of June 1972 in Arizona had many storms and floods. On May 3, 1999 a massive tornado outbreak happened that famously caused the Moore F5 that will be later in the video but right now I will be talking about a tornado that happened in central Kansas and hit Wichita, Kansas. It was the late evening hours of May 3rd, already after the Moore F5 when a tornado dropped north of Wellington, Kansas and began moving north towards Wichita. The tornado then destroyed Hayesville, Kansas. It went through South Wichita before dying off near the McConnell Air Force Base. It had six fatalities and 150 injuries. On the same day a tornado began south of Amber, Oklahoma. The tornado then grew to an F4 very fast now northeast of Amber. It continued to intensify until it grew to an F5 when it hit Bridge Creek and when it hit the city 12 people and 9 of the deaths in Bridge Creek were people in mobile homes. The tornado then weakened to AF2 then formed a satellite tornado near La Luna, Oklahoma. It re-strengthened to an F5 when it hit the city of Moore, Oklahoma as a multiple vortex tornado. It then weakened to an F4 when it hit Dell City and then dissipated. 
The tornado had 301 mile an hour winds which is the highest winds on earth as it is considered the strongest tornado in history as it also had 36 fatalities and 583 people were injured as the day after the tornado president at the time Bill Clinton signed a major disaster declaration which let Oklahoma receive aid. The tornado was so bad that the National Weather Service while the tornado was happening decided that there was such a high chance for severe loss of life that the National Weather Service decided to have a tornado emergency for the first time ever. In 2013 another EF5 hit more. It started with the Storm Prediction Center issuing a moderate risk and a 10% hatched risk for EF2 plus tornadoes. At 2.26 p.m. a severe thunderstorm warning was issued for McLean, Oklahoma. Then after that a tornado warning was issued for more Oklahoma then the tornado dropped down. The tornado rapidly intensified to an EF3 in Newcastle, Oklahoma. It then entered more as a violent EF5 tornado. It then completely swept houses of their foundation in more as entire neighborhoods were flattened. Exiting more the tornado was an EF4. After that the tornado dissipated. There were 24 fatalities from the tornado and it was so far the last EF5 tornado. The city of Dallas, Texas has seen many large tornadoes. One of the most well-known was an F3 that went through downtown Dallas in 1957. The tornado began near the Dallas Love Field Airport. It then went right through meters. The tornado destroyed Addison, Texas and dissipated south of Frisco. This tornado was very heavily documented as it was seen live on TV as 10 people died and 200 were injured. Decades later an EF3 hit Richardson in Dallas, Texas. It started near Highland, Texas and grew to an EF2 near Oldham. The tornado started doing EF3 damage near meters and continued fluctuating between doing EF3 to EF1 damage until it dissipated east of Richardson. It was rated a low-end EF3 and caused $1.5 billion in damages. West of Dallas, Texas is the city of Fort Worth that got hit by a tornado in 2000. It started west of downtown Fort Worth and moved straight into the city. It damaged many skyscrapers and the downtown area then dissipated. It had two fatalities and 80 injuries and was rated F3. In 1953 an F5 hit Waco, Texas. Many skyscrapers collapsed even before the tornado hit because of the wind and rain. Once the tornado hit downtown the RT Dennis building completely collapsed and killed 30 people that were inside the building. After destroying Waco it went right through Belmede and dissipated near the Waco airport. After the tornado, five feet of rubble covered some parts of Waco as 600 people were injured and 114 people were killed. In 1977, an F5 began near Sherman Heights, Alabama. The tornado scraped the northern side of Birmingham, Alabama at F5 strength as it completely destroyed houses as one house was reported to have been completely swept away including its foundation. It then went through northern Tarrant, Alabama before dissipating right before it hit Huffman, Alabama. Ted Fujita nearly raided the Tornado F6 similarly to the 1970 Lubbock F5 and the Xenia F5 as 22 people died. On April 8, 1998 another F5 had almost the exact same path. The tornado began north of Kellerman doing F0 damage. It rapidly intensified doing F3 damage in Ezra, Alabama. As the tornado continued to intensify and began doing F5 damage in Hopkins and Rock Creek as houses were swept away and cars in a church parking lot were thrown into a ravine. The violent F5 damage continued as it entered Sylvan Springs, Alabama. The tornado then went through McDonald Chapel until it dissipated near a northwestern suburb of Birmingham called Pratt City. 32 people were killed from the tornado and 259 people were injured. The 2011 super outbreak had multiple terrible tornadoes but the most famous one was the infamous Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4. The tornado began south of Mantua, Alabama doing EF0 damage. It rapidly intensified to an EF2. Before entering Tuscaloosa at EF4 a tornado emergency was issued by the National Weather Service. The violent tornado entered Tuscaloosa doing high-end EF4 damage. 
It then destroyed an apartment complex in Alberta City. The tornado then began to move towards Birmingham. It then hit the north side of the city before dissipating. The tornado had 64 deaths and 1,500 fatalities and caused $2.4 billion in damages. In 2008, an EF2 began near downtown Atlanta, Georgia. At this time, a basketball game was taking place in the Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta. With moments left in the game, Mikhail Riley tied the game to send it into overtime, keeping thousands of people leaving the stadium while the tornado hit. Eventually, the tornado hit the stadium as debris was seen falling from the ceiling of the arena. The tornado continued on its path before it dissipated near Brownwood. It had one fatality and zero injuries. In 2020, a tornado dropped down south of Scottsboro. It rapidly intensified to an EF2 when it hit John Toon Airport. The tornado then entered northern Nashville at EF2 strength. It strengthened to an EF3 in East Nashville. After exiting Nashville, it continued doing EF3 damage when it hit Clearview. The tornado weakened to an EF1 near Lebanon, Tennessee before dissipating. The tornado caused $1.5 billion in damages and killed five people. Please like and subscribe.